Bali is one of the largest zone areas in Ethiopia and home to the Bali Mountains National Park. Its Afro-Alpine climate is set to host the highest incidence of endemic wildlife per area in the world. These mountains get less of a spotlight compared to the mountains in the northern part of Ethiopia, but I think they're just as fascinating. I always wanted to visit, but it has been a challenge due to the remoteness. My time had finally come to make this trip, and I'm glad I saved it for this time. I believe things happen and don't happen for the best. Going at this time with these circumstances was just very ideal for me. I went with a small group of photographer traveler friends on a really comfortable forerunner, which is ultimately the best way to travel. The peak of this trip was the moment we reached the second highest point of Ethiopia at the Tulu Dimtu summit after a long hike. We then spent our last night camping in a dense forest with so much mystery in a small town deep in the Harana forest. This trip was very special as I connected with everyone I came across and went with. It was a trip where Mother Nature and Earth surprised me again. I explored part of Ethiopia that is just unique even to the world. This place is like no other, so get ready to explore the Bali Mountains National Park. We woke up and left Addis around 6 a.m. The car ride was very smooth because the vehicle we took was built for off-road trips. We caught the beautiful sunrise and headed south. Even though looking out the window was so beautiful, it was still a long 10-hour drive, so we took occasional naps and played good music. We then reached Dodola for a lunch stop, almost completing the 400-kilometer journey. After another four-hour drive, we picked up our guide Musa Yin from Bali Goba and drove into the interior of the mountains towards our first campsite. I started to feel the remoteness of this place, and right when we got there, we were welcomed by the seasonal changes. <laughs> we saw an interesting place when we got out of the car. It was once watery, but then dried up, and only rocks were left when we arrived at the scene. The air was heavy to breathe up here, and I realized how high up we were. The last thing left between us and our first campsite was a short hike. Oh my god, this is so awesome. Bali offers more than just a hike, I must say. There's so much to see and do going between any two points. Oh, that used to be a waterfall. It dried up completely. The air is so fresh. We passed by a waterfall and stopped to skid rocks. We also spotted Ethiopian wolves before reaching our campsite. These solitary endemic animals are so rare and hard to spot. They're so cute and shy, I found them so adorable. We saw unbelievable views when heading to our first campsite, and I caught the sunset, which put a smile on my face. I was in complete awe of this place.
in awe of this place. I'm gonna be here for the next four days and I'm gonna try to catch every sunset on each day from here. It's beautiful. That's our campsite right there. Um, I just hiked up here, sort of meditate, have some peace, and enjoy the sunset. Um, that's such, such a beautiful experience. And we haven't even started the journey. This is the first day, <laughs> and I'm already amazed. Yeah. Shout out to Ethiopian National Parks. They're beautiful. And I was like, it's gonna get through the light. Yeah. Okay. Oh, quite, quite, quite. Let's dim it down a tiny bit. Can you get that? Yeah. Once the sun set, everything in sight turned dark, and it hit me that we were in the middle of nowhere alone. Our local hosts made us vegetable soup and barbecue for dinner. We talked and bonded into the freezing night, which called for some shots of arake. Spending the night in a tent in this weather was absolutely brutal. One of the tents was a family tent, so we realized why not we all sleep together in order to save our precious body heat. Well, we managed, but it was not my favorite night since all three of my friends were snoring the entire night. And that was actually more brutal for me than the negative degree cold. We out here, trying to capture the sunrise. There's nothing like a full day spent at a new travel destination. We had to wake up at 5 a.m. to catch the sunrise, and I have to say it was all worth it. It looked like another planet, and we climbed up even higher for a better view where everything changed. It was a special moment before breakfast. A few minutes later, I went down because I couldn't handle the cold, then headed straight to where I saw steam and smoke. The hosts had started a fire in the warm kitchen and I was taken care of so well. They gave me tea, ambasha, and even a pair of socks. I have no words for these people. Wow. Today's one of the coldest mornings. I'm like literally sitting under the fire. This day was a big day because it was our first actual hike on this trip. We set off to conquer the mountains right after breakfast. Ready for the big hike. The scene kept changing rapidly and consistently throughout the entire journey. We were going to the second campsite, which had an even higher elevation. Cars couldn't even pass through the trail beyond this point, so we had to hike the whole way, stopping every couple of hours to catch our breath and snack on some colo and dates. I'm trying to go past that mountain. That morning, I'm wearing black and yeah. Ooh, buddy. Second hike, no, camping site. Second, <laughs> second camping site. Oh, how many kilometers? 10? Oh. Uh, 10. Oh. No, 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 no. We're doing 17. 17 kilometers. Jesus, I take that back. Oh, this is what happens when you don't count. You just gotta hike. Ah, oh, bruh. Look at this guy. No way. Right here. Are, are we there yet? Bro, am I? As challenging as it all was, the struggle of walking these long hours was well worth it. The inner peace I get during these hikes keeps me going in life. Everywhere I looked, I took an incredible beauty that left me speechless. We saw many herds of Niala and sounders of warthogs roaming in the vast fields. We stopped on the way to our site for a quick lunch. Honestly, our first day of hiking wasn't bad at all. We traveled at a decent pace and reached our campsite on time. This is our second campsite. That will be my room. This campsite was full of wild animals and whitish green shrubs. These plants seem dead because of the cold weather, but yet very alive. I saw some horses here returning from the open fields without their owner around. I was told that they are so in tune of their environment, they find their way back precisely at the right time every day. 
It was such a beautiful evening. We started a fire a few hours later, had dinner, drank tea, and talked late into the night. On this day, I actually achieved my long-time goal of stargazing in the clear sky. It was one of my favorite nights because I got to relax free from stress looking at the stars for hours. I never get to do this in the city, so I stayed long after everyone had gone to sleep. Wow, I could never get over waking up in these places. <sighs> I can hear the sound of the animals. They're like my alarm. This morning we woke up at 8 a.m. since we were exhausted and didn't have anything to be in a hurry for. The tent view was so nice. This whole trip often felt like a dream. We had breakfast and headed to complete the day of extremes. For those of you who have never heard of Tuludintu, it is the second highest mountain in Ethiopia behind Rastashen in the Semien Mountains. Today, I was really eager to check this off my bucket list. Move! <laughs> it's, it's, it's like Richard Pryor. <laughs> Richard Pryor works like this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Ooh. Rise and shine. We're gonna be hiking the second highest mountain in Ethiopia this morning. Ooh. No more is hard. But uh, beautiful weather. The team is absolutely amazing. Just can't wait. After a three day trekking, we finally reached the city. So, our car is waiting for us over there. Let's bounce. And we're gonna drive 100 kilometers to Harana Forest and camp out there. That'll be our last campsite. It's so fun. We went to our car and our driver helped us cover car friendly roads. We then climbed the rest of the way, stopping for coffee once. The Tuludintu Peak was located in Gopa. We had finally made it and the view from the top was unlike anything I've seen so far. It was so high with a clear view of the world beneath. And sorry for repeating this so much, but it really looked like we were somewhere outside of Earth and looking down like aliens. <laughs> that was an unforgettable achievement, but we had to keep moving. We continued trekking to our third and final stop. Our next campsite was at the bottom of Bali. It was a drastic change from a really steep ascent to the lower points of the Harana forest. We marched on and finally reached Rira, a special small town I've always wanted to visit. It rained when we arrived. It was a beautiful wet scene to witness and photograph. I smelt the earthy aroma of the soil. This town is well known for its dark vegetable called gomen and wild honey from the forest. We had quite an appetite after all the mountain climbing, so we stopped by a humble shack for some late lunch. This has to be one of the best gomen meals I've ever had in my life, followed by some fresh wild honey and bread. We finished up, then the sun came out right on time. Oh, this is nice. Get closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
እዚህ ጋር ነው ራሳችሁን ይሁት ወቃ ወቃ ወጥፉገር የካሜራ በላል ስቲቭ እንጃጋኔ Wow, we just arrived at the Rira village in inside Harana forest and we're gonna drive down and camp inside the forest. It's gonna be a crazy scene. I heard there are so many waterfalls. I'm gonna attempt to swim in the cold. But um, yeah, welcome to Rira village. አንተ ጋር ልምጣሽ ደስ ይላል ሩማና ታምር ያለሽ ባሬዱ we took this chance to walk around town and interact with the town's folks we talked with the people and took some pictures of them we then had some forest coffee and called it a day second campsite at them the living room the crib the kitchen the everything the bar <laughs> the bar for tonight <laughs> yeah campfire oh really I'm really big about uh, margins. Oh, okay. And now on the bottom side, I'm balanced in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, but now I got shot. Welcome, welcome. Cheers. 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 It was so calm once we reached our final campsite after a challenging yet rewarding experience. We had a warming campfire conversation and grew even closer after our last big adventure. Our driver was so hilarious that I was unable to eat my dinner properly because of all the laughter. <laughs> These are the moments I live for out and about, breaking my day-to-day -day routines in the wilderness. We're gonna go see the waterfall, but uh, I changed my mind on swimming. It's very cold. I don't think I'll be swimming. Muzi, ya water fall us in the Ma? Gusa. Gusa waterfall.
Eksiğe verir. Ay zor, ay zor. <gülüyor> Neyin al, lepsi şöyle ver. Ballet was one for the books. Untouched nature everywhere, memorable experiences, and beautiful people are what make up amazing trips. I can't get tired of this place and would love to see it again or even get lost here, who knows? It was an unexpected addition to my life as it was a spontaneous trip. I'm really glad I had my cousin around, my photographer friend, and my travel buddy who organized this whole thing. I'm not sure about the odds of me returning, so I'm glad we did it this time. But one thing I know for sure is this crew is definitely going somewhere else together. Comment where you'd like to see us go next. Thank you so much for watching until the end. It means a lot to me that you guys take your time to watch what I want to share. I hope I inspired you to travel and explore more or taught you a thing or two about the hidden gems I believe you must see someday. See you next time.